Today's lesson is over factoring a basic trinomial. So what do I mean by basic trinomial? I mean a quadratic trinomial in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c where the a value is one. So a is one, that's what I mean by basic trinomial. When this a value is not one, it's a number other than one, it becomes, there's a lot more steps involved to factoring those types of trinomials. So today we're actually gonna be practicing a skill that will help us factor this basic trinomial and that skill is finding factors. So I'm gonna read this little segment right here. When we factor a trinomial, we need to be able to find two numbers that satisfy two requirements. They must either add or subtract to equal a specific, num specific number, and they must multiply to equal a specific number. So today we're just gonna practice finding these factors. So in our first set of examples, when we find factors, I like to use this little graphic organizer. That's an X. And I put the product up top and the sum down below. So what do I mean by product? I mean, this number right here times this number right here will equal this number right here. It forms a product of that number, right? And the product is an answer to a multiplication problem. Sum down here, this factor right here, plus this factor right here will equal this sum. So in this first example over here to the right, if I have the product of 20 and a sum of 12, you see how I've written that the product is first, comma, sum is second. So product of 20, sum of 12. So I fill it out in my graphic organizer just like that. I put the product here of 20 and the sum here of 12. So now I need two numbers that satisfy both of those requirements. Well, here are my numbers. 10 times two is 20, check. And 10 plus two is 12, check. Those are the numbers that satisfy both requirements. So let's go through this set of notes and my notes on the screen might look slightly different than what you have, but all the content remains the same. So just follow along and fill in your notes. So let's get started. Find factors of the first number that add to equal the second number. So I'm looking for factors of 72 that add to equal 17. Okay, when I'm doing this, I'm gonna make a T-chart. You might remember this from back in the day, a T-chart of 72. I'm looking for factors of 72. So I'm gonna go one times 72, two times 36. Does three go into 72? Well, if I don't know, I can always do 72 divided by three on my calculator, and it does. Three times 24, four times 18, six times 12, and eight times nine. These are all the factors of 72. All of these numbers go into 72. So which pair also adds to 17? Eight and nine, those are my numbers. That's all we're doing today. So let's do our next example, 24 and 10. I'm looking for factors of 24 that add to 10. So let's do our T chart for 24. Now, some of you might remember from maybe sixth grade where you did the rainbow. What are your factors of 24? One and 24, connect them, draw your rainbow. Two and 12, those are factors of 24. Draw your rainbow, and then you would list all your factors that way. Some of you are like, huh, I never did that. We did that when I taught sixth grade and my students loved it. So one times 24, does two go into 24? It sure does, two times 12. Does three? Yep, three times eight. Does four? Yep, four times six. This is pretty simple if you know your multiplication facts. If you don't, use your calculator. So now which pair out of these factors also has a sum of 10? Meaning when I add them together, I get 10. Four and six, those are my numbers. The next one, I'm looking for factors of 15 that add to 16. So I'm gonna draw my T-chart for 15. The factors of 15 are one and 15, two doesn't go on 15, it's odd, three and five, and that's it. Which two numbers also add to 16? One and 15, and those are my numbers. So now let's move on to part two. Now I'm gonna practice finding two numbers 
that have a product of a number and a difference of the second number. So when I multiply them together, I'm gonna to get this top number, but now I'm not adding them together to get the bottom number, I'm subtracting them. So we're just, again, we're just practicing finding factors. That's all we're doing. So I'm looking for a product of 20 and a difference of one. It's five and four because five times four is 20 and five minus four is one. So it satisfies those two requirements that I need. So that's what we're gonna do in this section. Find factors of the first number that subtract to equal the second number. So again, I'm gonna set up my little X here. Factors of 50 that subtract to five. So I'm gonna do the same process of making my T-chart and finding my factors of 50 because that's really my first step. I gotta find the pairs that I'm looking at. So one and 50, obviously that's first. It's even, so it's definitely divisible by two. Two and 25. Three doesn't go into it. Four doesn't go into it. Five does, five and 10. And because there are no numbers that go into 50 between five and 10, I know I'm done, okay? So which two numbers also subtract to five? Which pair? Five and 10. And it doesn't matter which number you put where. We're just creating a graphic, a graphic organizer. We're just finding those two numbers. So this is really what we need. Okay, number five, two numbers that multiply to 36 that subtract to 16. So I'm gonna make my T-chart. Factors of 36. Obviously, we're gonna start with one times 36. It's even, so I know it's divisible by two. Two and 18. It's definitely divisible by three. And y'all might remember your divisibility rules from middle school or elementary school since three plus six is nine and nine is divisible by three. 36 is divisible by three. I love my divisibility rules. So three times 12, four also goes into 36, four times nine and 36 is a perfect square because six times six is 36. So which two numbers also subtract to 16? Which pair out of all of these pairs of factors? Two and 18. Moving on to number six, factors of 100 that subtract to 21. Let's do our T-chart. Factors of 100. So this will be a good idea to pause the video find your factors, then restart it, and we'll go from there. So factors of 100, one times 100, it's even, so two goes into it, two times 50, three does not, four does, four times 25, five absolutely does because it ends in zero. If it ends in five or zero, it's divisible by five. Five times 20, and again, this is another perfect square, 10 times 10. Which two numbers subtract to 21? Four and 25. Those are our two numbers. So we're just finding factors. Let's move on to part three. Okay, so now when given, I'm gonna change colors here. When given your quadratic equation, in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c, the numbers that we're gonna put in our little graphic organizer are gonna be a times c, and we're gonna put that up here, and then we're gonna put that b term down here. So for this particular problem right here, I would have uh, an x or a graphic organizer that would look like this, three times one is three, and then down here it'd be four. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, in part three, we're gonna find factors of A times C that have a sum of B. So now we have to pay attention to our integer rules. So now we're gonna be, the reason we did our sum of numbers in part one and then our difference of numbers in part two is because we have to think about our integer rules. So let's look at number seven. We're gonna take what we did in parts one and two and we're gonna add this little bit to it. So I'm gonna multiply A times C, two times five, and I'm gonna put that product up here and I'm gonna put that B term down here. 
So now I'm looking for two numbers that have a product of 10 and a sum of 7. So let's list our factors of 10. 1 times 10, 2 times 5, and that's it. So which pair has a sum of 7? 2 and 5. Now notice, in this particular problem, our sum is positive and both factors are positive. Because my product right here is positive, I know that either a positive times a positive, my factors are positive and positive, or they're negative and negative. But since my sum is positive, both of my factors are positive. So the sum is positive. Let me write that down. I don't know if I explained that well. The sum is positive, so both factors are positive. When I have a positive product, I know both of my factors are the same sign because a positive times a positive is a positive and a negative times a negative is also a positive. But because my sum is positive, I know both factors are positive. I think I explained that much better that time, but I still don't know if you understand it. So let's move on to number eight. Three times five. Factors of 15 that add to negative 16. Okay, I'm looking for factors of 15. So because this is a positive 15 up here, I know both of my factors are going to be the same sign. Because when I multiply numbers that have the same sign, I get a positive product. If you know your integer rules, you're understanding what I'm saying right now. If you don't, you're struggling a little bit. So now my sum is negative, which means both of my numbers are going to be negative. All right, let's do this. 1 and 15. 2 doesn't go into 15. 3 does. 3 and 5. Which two numbers add to 16? 1 and 15. Negative 1 and negative 15 are my numbers. Those are my factors. So since my sum is negative, both factors are negative. This is pretty much why we do a whole day of just finding factors. So let's move on to number nine. When I don't have any number in front of a variable, what can I put there? I can put a one. So I'm looking for factors of negative 20. And that bottom number down here is going to be a negative one. Okay, so let's think about this one because this is different. Our product up here is negative which means the signs of both of my factors are going to be different. One's positive and one's negative. They can't be the same. If they were the same, I would have a positive product, just like I did on number seven and on number eight. This one's different. Now I'm looking for factors of 20 that have a difference of one. Okay, so factors of 20, one and 20, it's even, two goes into it, two times 10, three doesn't, four times five. Well, I know I'm done because I'm at four and five, so we're done. Which two numbers have a difference of one? It's four and five. Okay, so now here's the hard part of this section, determining which one is positive and which one is negative. Well, if you remember your integer rules, if your difference or the sum is negative and the signs are different, the bigger number is negative. So the bigger number out of these two factors, which is five, is the one that's gonna be negative. And the other one's this. So what that means is when my, when my product is negative and my sum is negative, the bigger number takes the sign of that. Okay, the bigger number takes the sign of that. So the bigger factor is negative. This is the hard part, but it's also the fun part. Let's move on to number 10. Okay, I'm looking for two numbers that have a product of negative 24 and a sum of two. 
I'm looking at that product of negative 24, and what's that going to tell you about the signs of the factors? Are they the same or are they different? If my product is negative, they're going to be different. Okay, because they're different, we're not going to have a sum of 2. We are going to have a difference of 2. Okay, because when, I when I'm adding or combining terms or numbers that have different signs, I'm subtracting them. Take the sign of the larger number. Okay, so factors of 24. 1 and 24, 2 and 12, let's keep going, 3 and 8, 4 and 6, and some of you are probably really, really fast at this, and some of you might be having to use your calculator. So which two numbers have a difference of 2? 4 and 6. So now we got to figure out which one is positive and which one's negative. If my sum is positive down here, then the bigger number out of these factors is positive. 6 is positive, 4 is negative. Those are my factors. So in this case, the bigger factor is positive. All right, last two, number 11. I'm looking for two numbers that have a product of negative 4 and a, well, what do I know about my numbers? My factors. If my product is negative, my signs are, oops, how do I change that? How do I take that off of there? Whoop, whoop. Okay, there we go. <laughs> my signs are different. And that means we're going to be subtracting to negative 4. So if I list my factors of 4, 1 and 4, 2 and 2, which two numbers have a difference of 4? Mm, none of them. This is an example that is not factorable. If you can't do this, it's not factorable. And that's okay. All right, let's move on to number... 12. Again, if nothing is in front of that variable, what can I put there? I can put a 1. I'm going to draw my x, two numbers that have a product of 12 and a sum of negative 7. A product that is positive, okay, are both my factors the same sign or are they different? They're the same sign. Okay, well, what sign is that? Are they both positive or are they both negative? Since my sum down here is negative, that tells me they're both negative. Same signs, add and keep. So let's list our factors of 12. What are our factors of 12? 1 and 12, 2 and 6, what else? 3 and 4. Which two numbers also have a sum of 7? 3 and 4. So negative 3 and negative 4 are my factors. So let's just do a quick little recap, okay? If I have a negative product, meaning that number up top is negative, I'm going to subtract. And my signs are different. Okay? And then the larger number takes the sign of the sum. Okay? What if, and I'm going to switch colors up here just because I want it to be different. What if I have a positive product? I'm going to add. And the same, the signs are the same. And the signs are whatever that sum is. So if that sum is negative, they're both negative. If that sum is positive, they're both positive. And this includes your part one lesson over factoring basic trinomials when A equals 1. Happy factoring!